Hello. Hi, Perry. <laughs> Ms. Gohar, can you hear me? Hello, Bola. Hello, how are you? How are you? Are ready? Sorry? I hope your shirts are ready. You said that your shirts will also be joining us today today's session. Uh, is there something wrong with your uh, mic? Some noise. There's surrounded noise. Think we can start now? Ah, uh, yes, exactly. Naib, if I'm yes, pronouncing your name correctly. Okay, Naib, yes, take the lead, then start. Hello there. Hi, Naib. Hello, how are you? Can you open your camera so we can see you? All right. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I think there's some issue at Miss Gohar's end, that's why she couldn't join the audio and she asked me to just proceed with the uh, session that we have today. Yes. So, shall we? Yes, we will. Yes. Um, All right, everyone. Welcome to the first session of Class to Class Exchange. Today's session topic is cross-cultural communication. It is my pleasure to introduce our honorable speaker, Ms. Wala Mustafa Hasabo. Ms. Hasabo is the head of the department for English and she teaches in both the American and British to grades nine and 11 and British division checkpoints grade at International Morning School. She has been in teaching business for 17 years and has made a significant impact on the lives of her students. Ms. Sasabo holds a big Bachelor's of Arts and Education degree from the English department and has completed several professional development courses, including ticketing models one, two, and three. Relo training for successful conference presenters, engaging online platforms and tools, and teaching communicative grammar. She is also a FELT certified, as well as alumna and mentor for Relo program. In addition to her teaching responsibilities, Ms. Sasabo is an active member of the Open Community Leader, where she serves as a community leader. 
Her contributions to the teaching community has been invaluable, and we are proud to have her as our host for the Class to Class Exchange Program. We congratulate Ms. Sabo on her achievements and thank her for her dedication to our students and teaching professions. Wow. Over to you, Ms. Sabo. This is the most interesting intro I have been said about me. Too much things. Let's, let's clap. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Naomi. Thank you very much. Let me just say something. Do you know how to pronounce my name? I'm Wala. Wala. Wala Hasabu. Hasabu, yes, exactly. Perfect, perfect. Okay, I have my team too. And uh, Abdurrahman, Azad, he's going to start now. Abdurrahman, the stage is yours. Uh, hello. Everybody, my name is Abdurrahman, and uh, a few things you know. Uh, impressively, you, uh, you answered correct, and but now we are here to add and give more, you more information. So first of all, Egypt has a historical and college, a historical and rich culture dating back thousands of years, starting with the Pharaonic uh, culture and Christianity and Islam. Egypt is coming to the earliest civilization. Its culture has been affected uh, by many cultures uh, and ethnic groups who either lived in, in or invaded uh, to the country. Uh, creating a melting point. Uh, the, the culture blended uh, together might be difficult for foreigners to understand, but once you get it and appreciate the uh, tradition, the experience in Egypt will be none like other. Uh, also, Egypt uh, has amazing and natural hostel uh, and culture attraction. So tourism is one of the uh, main sources of income, especially before the revolution. Egypt is uh, uh, Egyptians are friendly. Uh, open to other colleges uh, and known for their good hospitality. Uh, so don't be surprised if people invite you and insist that you accept the invitation. Uh, Egyptian also like uh, people. Uh, it's very common if it's direct to help people. It's very common if you ask someone uh, for your help or direction, uh, they will call others to also make sure you get what you want or where you want to go. Yes. No, it's you have finished Abdurrahman, right? You thank you, Abdurrahman, very much for this yes, great introduction, really. Thank you very much. Uh, we have Perihan, Walid, and um, Perihan, hey. yes, the stage is yours, dear. What you? Introduce yourself, dear. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm Perihan Walid. I'm in grade nine. And uh, I'm going to talk about the family. Actually, family plays the main, uh, one of the important roles in any person's life, as they, uh, it's important for existence, as they pay special attention to family values and relationships. Families encourage and financially support their sons and daughters to get married. Usually, home. home and child supporting the family financially. When family members are connected, uh, they deeply mourn the death of a family member. Egyptians, after a family member passes, this situation can last for four years. They see that showing any sign. of happiness in a, in a funeral is untold. Like to throw big wedding parties and invite all family members and friends so that they can be happy together. Right. Okay. Amazing. Uh, Mezin Hatem, our third speaker, he's going to tell us about the religion in Egypt. Mezin, are you ready? Yes, my name is Mezin Hatem, I'm from Egypt, as you know, and I'll talk about religions in Egypt. Religion plays a big, ro a big role in the life of Egyptians, and it's intermingled with daily activities of Muslims and Christians living in Egypt. You can see uh, this clearly during Ramadan, Christmas, and the Eids where festive, uh, festive spirits are uh, everywhere. Moscow is around every corner, so you're walking down the streets of Egyptian cities, you can hear the call to the prayer during the five prayers, five prayer times per day. 
although Egyptians used the Western calendar, they referred to the Islamic calendar for Islamic religious holidays, uh, like uh, in Ramadan and the Eids, to the two Eids. Uh, and Ramadan is the most important month in the year. During this month, uh, Muslims fast from sunrise to the sunset, focusing on praying and doing charity work. Streets and homes are decorated to celebrate the occasion, and special meals are prepared. Thank you, Mazin. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, now we have um, uh, Abdullah Izzet. Yes. Hi, guys. My name is Abdullah Izzet. I'm from Egypt, and I'm 16 years old. I'm in Britain, and I'm going to introduce you the celebrations of, uh, the celebrations of Egypt. Speaking about the uh, speaking of parties, Egypt loves celebrations. Close and stacked family members gather during holidays and celebrate in special celebrations. Due to the love of food, all of the celebrations they include sharing special meals prepared for occasions. Women usually take pride in their ability to cook several dishes and compete among themselves for who make the most delicious dishes. Restaurants are one of the, one of the most thing business in Egypt like trying to new occasions are one of the Egyptians. Abdullah, are you still there or have we lost you? Uh, we're so sorry, but there's, an, uh, there's a problem in the internet, so we can, can we wait for a minute? Okay. Uh, by the way, Abdurrahman is Abdullah's brother, if you have just noticed how similar they are to each other. <laughs> Actually, they are twins. That's what I noticed. I was like, why there right? are two... Isn't it clear? Why Isn't it clear? Sim- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or it's you like, thought why that they, they are the same? Similar people with different sim- yeah, I oh. thought they were the same. I was like, why? The same person, the same but person? the different names? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, uh, it seems that um, uh, Abdullah need to connect again, uh, but um, uh, we can just move to another another thing that uh, would be produced by um, um, Salma, Salma Walid. Yes. Yes, hello Salma, how are you? Fine, thank you. Salma is going to introduce for us the most famous places that you can visit in Egypt and the uh, our uh, famous delicious cuisines and Salma the stage is yours just a second can you share the screen with us yes okay dear only the host can share in this meeting okay Miss Gohar can you allow Salma Walid to um, just share her photos Hello, Salma. Hi. <laughs> now, can you share, Salma? Right now, Salma, yes. Ah, uh, yes, one by one, Salma, and tell us the names. Oh, okay. Yes, dear. Hmm. T- 
tell us the what is me? the name of each place yes we can we can hear you well just tell us the name of the each place and where is it i can hear you we can we can hear you okay so let's start first let's start. we have the egyptian museum the pyramids of giza salah al-din castle abu simple temple khan al-khalili uh, yes wait salma the, we, we haven't seen the the um, uh, abu simple temple just yes can you show it again and here we have falafel uh, salma can you hear me? Salma? Yes. Yes, now we are here in Khan Khalili. Wait, this is Falafel by now. This is, now we can see Falafel, one of our cuisines. <laughs> yes. Okay, and what else do we have? Yes, next, Salma. Falafel and fool. Yes. yes, wait. We still need to see. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> this is beans. We can have it like breakfast or dinner. What else? Salma? The Next. connection is so so poor. Yes. Can you just show us the next picture? Yes. We have here kushari. Mm. Yes. One of the food. Yes, it's made of lentil, rice, and macaroni. Yes. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> and the last one? <laughs> is, that a, no. is that a real one? Is that your mother had made it? <laughs> yes. It seems so real. <laughs> Okay, and we have here Mulukhiya. Okay, yes. Mulukhiya is like a, a green plant and we just used to, um, chopped it very well and we cooked it with the, with soup. And Any, hmm? that's, it. that's it? Yes. Thank you very much. You just made it un hungry, really, Salma. <laughs> Thank you very much, Salma. Okay, we will get back to Abdullah. Are you here? Abdullah and Mezin? Yes. Right? So you are going to give us like a summary? Yes. yes. So what, what I want to say is that Egypt's long history, tourist attractions, and geographic location make it an ideal destination for business and tourism. But before you visit or develop an Arabic transition st strategy for doing business in Egypt, it's important to understand the culture and traditions and, and what impact them. Egypt has been prey to many invaders throughout history and recently due to economic and political problems. But Egyptian has been strong sense of humor and they find humor in everything, including themselves. This is what keep us going despite all hardships. Yeah, thank you, Abdullah and Mazin, very much. Um, uh, finally, but not last, we have uh, Prihan is going to answer some of the questions that you have sent on through Padlet, the second section about the thing that you want to know about Egypt. Perihan, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, someone has asked if Egypt is an Arab country, actually, or that... Definitely, Egypt is an Arab country, and the large of beings and the Internet issues. There is Mulukhiya, there is Fakhri, as Salma said, and one of the other things Egypt is in the world. Is it okay now?
Betty, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Hmm. Just give me one minute. Can you hear me? Yes, dear, we can hear you well. Okay. Uh, most uh, things Egypt is famous for. Egypt is very famous for its ancient civilization and the monuments of the majestic pharaohs, such as the Great Pyramids of Giza, the Great Sphinx, and the Gym, which is the Grand Egyptian Museum. Uh, someone asked about the famous art, uh, artists in uh, Egypt. One of them is called Ale Awad. He came to forefront of Cairo's graffiti scene as he painted a port side Masara's mu uh, memorial mural. And his iconic in this painting was new uh, pharaonic style. The population of Egypt is relatively homogeneous. The overwhelming majority, which is over 90%, are Arabic-speaking Sunni Muslims. About 6% only are Christians. <clears throat> uh, uh, Egypt is famous for the, uh, the Karnak Temple, the Nile River, which is the heart of Egypt, Temple of Itfu, White Desert uh, National Park. Egypt is also famous for its cotton. Uh, and it's uh, considered as one of the best kind of cottons in the world. Uh, that's because it's from the kind of the long staple. Egypt is different from other civilizations for the many achievements of ancient Egyptians include the uh, serving and construction techniques that supported the buildings of the pyramids in Giza. Um, that's all. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Very uh, thank I appreciate your uh, your great job, all of you, Abdurrahman, Abdullah, Mazin, Perihan, and dear Salma for the delicious dishes that you have shown for us. Thank you very much. And um, uh, if you have any questions, so we can answer you immediately. Yes, we can chat together if you want. Nine. I think some. Yeah, I think some of our students have already tried your dishes. I would ask Zahra to please uh, enlighten them with what they tasted like. Oh, hello everyone. Am I audible? Yes, Zahra. Yeah. Okay, Assalamu Alaikum, first of all. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullah. Uh, okay, um, uh, the reason I, I, I've tried all of these dishes because uh, I had a lot of friends. Uh, they were from uh, Alexandria and Cairo. And really? even my father was so fond of uh, Mulukhiya. He was like, I need this dish at home and I want you guys to prepare it. But we as Pakistanis, we actually did not have, you know, those magic the way these, uh, you know, you guys had Egyptian. So uh, I tried falafel. It was like, uh, it is actually made of chickpeas. Like, uh, yeah. So it was the best. It was like, you know, a snack for us. And then I've also tried koshari and I've also full madamis. Full madamis was our most favorite. We used to have it in uh, breakfast. We used to also have it in lunch as well. My father used to have it. He had friends all over. So uh, this is the thing. It was amazing. So, so Zahra, you already eat uh, uh, beans in Pakistan? Uh, uh, not not in Pakistan. I was actually in UAE at that time. I was. I I taste all of them. Yeah, really and what kind of as well? <laughs> interesting. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you have tried anything else different than those dishes that we have mentioned? Uh, no, actually, I also mentioned in the Padlet if there's any other cuisine, Egyptian cuisine, because I really enjoyed the others. So if there's falafel, was it's still my favorite. And I'm still, you know, if I get a chance, because uh, these days, you know, it's uh, actually a little bit difficult, you know, to find the original cuisine. So I would still try falafel again if, if I come across one. Uh, but then uh, I would really love to, you know, know about more of such, you know, Egyptian cuisines. Okay, I would, uh, one of my team, do you want to share any other dishes that you know and you, uh, you like it best so you can just tell us about it? Abdullah, Abdurrahman, Mazin, Perry, Salma again. Uh, yes, I would like to recommend the mahsh. <laughs> we have variety of, of mahsh, yes. <laughs> Eggplant and the wara'anab. 
uh, we have cabbage. We just stuff anything with rice and say this is mahshi. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, I've also tried it. I've also tried, you know, stuffing, uh, you know, this uh, kosa. Do you know kosa? I don't know what you call it. I think in Arabic also they say kosa. It's a kosa, so yeah. So I've tried kosa and, uh, <laughs> yeah, the kosa. Uh, yeah, okay. And I've also tried capsicum and, uh, you know, eggplant, brinjal. I've also tried, uh, you know, stuffing that. And it's amazing, let me tell you. <laughs> so, you, yes, you need just to come and visit Egypt here then. Okay, Nayab, does anyone want to ask any one of the, the, the team or my team here in Egypt? Yes, uh, they can go ahead. I have um, Abdullah, Abdurrahman, I have Mazin, Perihan, and Salma. Nayab, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, if anyone wants to yes. ask... Yes, if you want to ask any one of my team about something, they can explain it or uh, so it's okay. Go ahead. I think they're writing down in the chat box. If you could just read it, they're very interesting. They're talking about food and food and food. <laughs> so they are interested with food only. <laughs> yeah, very much. We Pakistanis love food. Okay. Ah, yes. I have here Malika. Malika Shah, eggplant, yes, fritters are so amazing. Have you guys ever tried them? Uh, at the eggplants, fritters, is that a dish in Pakistan? We cook it in like a different way. Sometimes we just fry them and sometimes we just stuff them and then they're in like uh karhai form and something like that it's 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 very tasty and you know it kind of have a different taste in every every dish that we create with eggplant okay great uh guys don't you want to tell us yeah abdullah abdurrahman mezin perihan salma you don't, don't want to talk about the the, uh, the eggplant how do we do it here in egypt yeah we stuff it with rice and we do it as a mash this is a mahshi, part really of the so mahshi. Delicious, you have to try it. Yeah. And another one. We fry it with the tamaya and the food. <laughs> yes, exactly. Don't you eat it with the, yes, we like the red sauce. We call it misa'ah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, it's with the meat. Yes, with, exactly. With minced meat, we just fried and uh, we, uh, we cooked it with, the, with red sauce and minced meat. We call it Mr. Ah. And that, Sometimes that seems it delicious, Mr. yeah. Sorry, yes, Prihan, say it again. Sometimes we do it as a mechalil. We fry it and then we put like some uh, garlic. Pickles. In, uh, uh, yes. yes, we eat it at, like pickles, exactly. That's right. Okay. With vinegar and um, 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 we have the uh, uh, vinegar and what? We, we put it to uh, uh, salt. And pepper. Okay. They all seem tasty. Have you ever tried like Pakistani dishes in yes. Egypt? Um. Yes, guys. The question is to you: Have you ever tried the Pakistani dishes in Egypt? Yes, I think I have tried biryani. I don't know if it's it. <laughs> That's our elite dish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was nice. It tasted nice. It is. It is. Anything other than that, or you know, in sweet gulab jamun or something like that. No. I've tried something sweet, but I I can't remember its name. Uh, okay, what does it look like? I might get it. It has like a, a tree paper and it's something sweet. Uh, it I don't know, it's fruits or something like that, topped with some spices. Topped with some spices. It 
it was here in the uh, uh, in Egypt, one of the, the restaurants. No, 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 it was in Kuwait. Uh, I can't remember actually its name, but it was uh, like yeah, yeah. It, it tasted also nice. It wasn't bad at all. Okay, then it might be something. Yes, it could be have been made by someone and said that this is a Castiani dish. Yeah, <laughs> easy. You guys can ask us questions about Pakistan and our culture and everything. We're open to it. Yeah, we would like to know so, uh, more about your culture. You know, we don't have any, uh, you know, uh, we have a little information about Pakistan. We want to know more about cultures and traditions. Okay, I'll, I'll give a chance to my friends as well. Zahra, Mehmuna, would you guys like to unmute your mic? Actually, actually, we have prepared a kind of a presentation for you guys on uh, how the Pakistani culture works and what kind of uh, delicacies we have, the food that we eat, and you know, something like that. So we have prepared a presentation for the next class. But I'll just give you guys a heads up. Um, Pakistan is very rich in culture when it comes to that, because uh, minorities live here as well and we have christians hindus muslims and sikhs and punjabis it's 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 like amalgamation of different civilizations and we live in such a, a beautiful and harmonious way that uh, it seems like we are one nation and we bring together all the different food from the different cultures like uh, on easters we have like um different uh, sort of food. Then we have Thanksgiving as well. The Christmas is also celebrated here as well. Then Halloween's in some places as well. So it's, you know, it's kind of an amalgamation in Pakistan. It, it is about this subcontinent because, you know, uh, different countries, uh, people from different countries come and we kind of sort of enjoy uh, every occasion, either it's our part of the culture or not. And we, you know, kind of respect every uh, religion and our cultures are very rich with everything and when it comes to food we have like tons and varieties of food so if any one of you could uh, like liba girls enlighten them about our food and stuff and everything just a little heads up not too much yes zahra go for it um okay uh Pakistan is actually, you know, it's a diverse, uh, you know, it's it's a country with, you know, diverse cultures. Like we have, you know, these five provinces uh, and all of these provinces, they're very rich in culture. And you won't believe it, but we, you know, all of them have different cultures. And somehow we are, you know, um, uh, joined together by a few occasions. We enjoy and celebrate Eid together, just like Nayab said. You know, we, we have different, you know, there are different religions. They have We have minorities as well. And so uh, it's like there, there is culture everywhere. So, you know, from these five different provinces, each province has its own culture. For example, uh, we belong from Peshawar, actually. And uh, Peshawar is known for its hospitality. It is known for, you know... Uh, I audible again I think I something happened in between yeah yeah you're good to go okay yeah I was talking about uh, the Pakhtun culture like the Peshawar culture and even in Peshawar living in Peshawar there are so many different ethnicities and you know there are so many different dialects speaking I speak a different dialect my friends speak a different dialect um, and then when it comes to food we have you know a chapli kebab is one of you know the favorite uh, you know, cuisine that is, you know, celeb uh, you know, it's like, it's favorite for other nations as well. So this is one of our favorite cuisines, chapli kebab. And then we have this um, green tea that is, you know, a speciality of Peshawar. We have so many other different things. Like, for example, if I talk about, uh, if I talk about another province, we have Punjab. They love, you know, they Punjab is like, you know, a mixture, a culture of spices. They love, you know, sp spicy food, and they're more like um, too much into spices. And then other than that, we have balochis. They love to, you know, 
uh, do these roasting things like you know roasting and you know meat eaters they're basically meat. you know they love you know doing experimenting with meat we have so many different cultures so many traditions even the traditions are so different around so pakistan is a diversity of different you know cultures uh, zahra can i ask you a question oh yes yes why not as long as you said that the, you have diversity uh, and this is related because you have varieties of uh, um ethnic beliefs and we have you have also varieties of religions there right you all live together in the same place or you live like um, not separated maybe but the, the groups i mean uh, who have the same beliefs live together in uh, in um, in in a place related to them where they can find the, uh, the their needs close to them like the places where they pray and all these things or they uh, you can find everything everywhere Did you get my oh, question? Regarding that, yes, uh, we actually, uh, uh, yes, I got to know your question. Yes, yes, we have different ethnicities, we have different religions. And just as I said, uh, you know, Pakistan is actually a federation country. You know, it has, you know, these five federal units. So uh, in each unit, there is, you know, all different kinds of religions. You know, we have uh, Christianity, we have Hinduism, we have... there are you know communities so there are religious places for you know everything there are churches there are gurdwaras and let me tell you okay uh, you know the gurdwara this is a place this is the place where uh, you pray no the, the, uh, no, uh, the gurdwara is the place for the sikhs you know sikhism yeah okay yeah and uh, we have churches for christianity we have temples for hinduism we have, you know, it's a variety of things. We, because it is like, just as I said, it is a diversity. So every kind of religion is, you know, uh, it is welcomed here. And even our forefather, our founder, Kaide Azam, he was the one, he said in his speech that you are free to follow your religion. You are free to go to your mosques. You are free to go to your temples. So, you know, we have a very, uh, a, a very big diversity. Even, uh, you know, some of these places have also become tourist places. Uh, for example, the Gurdwara that I was talking about, it is, you know, a major tourist, you know, uh, religious, you know, uh, just like people come here for, uh, you know, like pilgrimages, you know, these Sikhs from all over, you know, the Asian continent, from India, from Nepal, from Sri Lanka, from, you know, all these, uh, we have Sikh communities everywhere. So they come and visit Pakistan, especially Gurdwara, because this is where, you know, the religious uh, you know, a leader actually, he, he lived here, or you could say this was their, you know, uh, religious place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Interesting. It has cultural importance. Mm -hmm. I think, if, um, I have, Prihan, you have a question, right? You raise yes. your hand. Yes, uh, we do have a question in chat box. I think we should move towards that first. So the question is from Nayab Khalid. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to know what is the name of the highest peak or place in Pakistan? I'm sorry, the what? Sorry, can you please repeat uh, it? What's the name? The name of the highest peak or place in Pakistan. The highest. Ah, okay, it's the K2 mountain. We have so many mountains. Okay. I'm sure you're referring to the K2 mountain. It is uh, something that Pakistan has. It is also like a wonder. It is the highest peak, the K2 mountain. It is like 161 meters. Wow. Or 65, okay. 100, uh, 111, no, 1161 or 65 meters. This is, I, uh, I cannot actually remember the actual you know the distance it's, it's, but uh, k2 is the highest peak it's 8611 if i'm not wrong it's something like that it's like the highest peak mountain uh, yes i'm actually not uh, i cannot recall the number yeah it's 8000 something 8600 uh we do have a question some questions in the chat box and i would like to ask the students uh, of egypt uh, when did Egyptian art start and what is the oldest art in Egypt? Uh, 
You want me to repeat the question? Uh, yes, can you repeat it? Uh, the question is, when did Egyptian art start and what is the oldest art in Egypt? Um, I can just give give us a start for this today, uh, just to try to manage the answer to the question. Uh, uh, our art has started earlier, maybe yeah. 15,000 years ago, uh, when, and had been discovered in the pharaoh's tombs. Mm -hmm. When they mm -hmm. found that it was the, the paintings on the walls, and uh, it was like, um, at the beginning, it was like samples for uh, things they were doing and um, uh, a, a reflection for their beliefs for the, uh, the the next life they thought that they are going to live after the death uh, so that would, what was the beginning and uh, uh, what's weird about the thing uh, and I, I consider it's like a miracle that um, some paintings are still uh, vivid till this time when you enter the tomb do you find that the, all the colors wow. uh, yes are still as if they have been just painted on the walls so what kind of colors were they using? The, the colors that can um, tend to, to live all the, those years? Uh, this is something like um, uh, a miracle that uh, needs to be discovered. I don't I know if, he, if anyone wants to add something. Uh, Abdullah Abdurrahman, Mazin. Yes, yes, I, I do want something that uh, it dates back to the 31 centuries BC and continue to the first century that that is ancient it is characterized the hypothesis sympathy and balance you know as you asked you, you needed to know one of the most famous is the uh, stone and the grief sympathetic and the master of the total combo those are uh, famous paints of Egypt Um, and Memuna wants to ask something. Uh, yes, I do want to. Sure, continue, continue. All right. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Good evening. Memuna? Yes, I am okay. talking. Actually, I had a question that for a long time, like in Pakistan, many women couldn't do businesses and were not even allowed to do jobs, etc. So it's like just now that people are accepting them doing the businesses and jobs, etc. So it was like most of the like as compared to the uh, religion, it was most some most of the time it was more of a cultural thing. So being Egypt and also an Islamic country, but then you know like in Islamic countries usually the cultures go the, with the same school of thoughts and the same mentalities. So I want to ask that if it was the same case in Egypt, like for the women, it was uh, not uh, as they were like not 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 as independent as the men were, or if they are still like that, or they never had problems, or if they like uh, are doing better now. So I wanted to ask that if they uh, had struggled the same uh, things that the women in Pakistan did for a long time. Okay, anyone want to add something? Well, let me tell you something, yes. Uh, uh, actually, yes, the, the, Abdullah, you want to answer the question? Yes, I think, uh, yes, I want to ask the question. I think... To no, answer. No. Yeah, do you have yes, a yes, question? The... Again, sorry? Yes, uh, uh, Nauma, just ask the question. Have you heard it? Yes, about the, the feminism in Egypt. Yes. Yeah, I think no, doesn't look like uh, you have the, the women that struggle a lot. Of course, they had a lot of struggles, but not, not as that much, you know. We have a little bit of democracy in Egypt. We don't have those things, really. The feminism didn't face those things. The feminists didn't face those things. Okay, I think someone in the chat. Uh, wanna... Yeah, continue, please continue. Yes, 
uh, want to add something. Uh, maybe back then, uh, women have struggled in uh, finding the freedom or totally free. And uh, but, but now it's not. Uh, women now have business. There is a lot of famous business women uh, in Egypt. Uh, they, uh, they take all the rights, and uh, we, we, we believe in free trade for men and women. Yes. Thank you, Abdullah. Okay, someone in the chat box asked if um, it, Egypt is an industrial uh, country or an agriculture one. Yes. Oh. Or is there any like economical thing that, you know, kind of uh, help made Egypt what Egypt is today? So what's what's that pinpoint of Egypt that makes Egypt Egypt? Yes, someone want to answer? Uh, yes, it's an agriculture country. It, uh, it's not an... Uh, it's not industry, it's uh, agriculture. And what makes Egypt Egypt, I think that they have a variety in the agriculture. We produce a lot of uh, a lot of things to the other countries. The crops. And the, the, the... Okay, so your like major import and export. What are those? Zara, you got, you want to add something? Um, I actually wanted to ask a question, but uh, let them answer the previous one. I think they have a connectivity issue. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we lost Abdullah. He, um, he has a, a poor connection for internet. It's okay. It's okay. So in a meanwhile, uh, when he returns, there's some interesting questions. Someone asked that what kind of Egyptian movies, thrillers or seasons we should watch? Like what kind of seasons and movies you guys would suggest us to watch? Perry, would you like to answer this question? Perry? Perry Ann, are you still there? Okay, the internet had just called some victims here. <laughs> this, you cannot trust technology. Yes, exactly. Uh, but okay, Mason, do you can you answer this question? We are asking about the the movies that um, you recommend. This there is to... a movie called Turab Al Mas. It's a very good movie. And it's Egyptian as well. There is a lot it... of Egyptian movies. If you could write it down in the chat box, we would like later on watch it probably and yes, then and, tell you in the next the session of, about it and yeah. write the name of the actress too Asir Yassin I think amazing uh, I don't remember <laughs> yes you might search the internet for the 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 um, uh, like the uh, the movie itself and you can share it with us yeah, definitely. And on the next session, we'll probably talk about it. Okay, uh, someone asked, what are the most common home businesses that women do in Egypt? What are the most home what? Sorry? What are the most common home businesses that women do in Egypt? The home businesses? Yeah. 
they make sweets and there uh, a lot of other businesses well. the most famous one sweets make them and sell them it's, it's real nice yes and you know the using the internet and the uh, social media just uh, uh, make the thing this is just uh, spread more and some yeah. of them also can sue yes cl uh, clothes um, wow. yeah they are perfect and doing this too that's Maybe really some yes, kind of netting also. Uh, other people are perfect and the uh, profession in doing this. But right now the um, uh, women had just just this. Uh, most of them came out to the world, so uh, uh, you find them in all the fields. Uh, like Abdullah said, yes. Um, uh, right now they are working uh, everywhere in the hospital, doctors, teachers. Um, um, uh, engineering and uh, all the fields you'll find that the women had proved their 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 self there. Aren't boys? <laughs> yeah. Do you have another question? Okay, someone in the chat box asked, who are the famous YouTubers of Egypt? Uh, this question is, uh, boy, is you supposed to answer this one? Yeah. You, they are familiar more than me. Uh, welcome to... YouTuber. Oh, uh, uh, there's uh, someone called uh, Nsuhi. He, uh, his content is about football. Uh, another one called uh, Marwan Sirri. He's also uh, making uh, football content. Uh, in gaming content, there's a lot of them. Someone's called uh, Muhammad uh, Sayed, maybe. Yeah, I, I think so. His name Muhammad Sayed is also very famous. He's, uh, it's uh, like gaming content. If anyone wants to add, Okay, Mazen, do you want to add any YouTuber famous for something? Uh, I'm the Sharif for food content. The food content? Uh, I'm the mm -hmm. Sharif. Mm -hmm. uh, I can read Goh or is it after Another one said... also making... Yes, yes, go ahead. His name is Amr Al Hadi. It's also a food content. There's someone called uh, Hamida. He's also a food, uh, he also makes food content. That's it. They, 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 in Egypt, uh, most content creators are famous for uh, food reviewing. Uh, food reviewers, yes, they are the most famous. And then uh, football, uh, uh, that's it. And no one is famous for playing games because Egyptians, you know, they're interested really in games. But uh, the most interesting thing <laughs> and the most thing that uh, people watch is food reviews. That's the most famous. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, sorry, it's um, uh, Nayab. I, I can hear and uh, read that uh, Gohar was asking about any special gift or handcraft that uh, you could suggest to use to buy when yeah. you visit Egypt. Yeah. Yes, tell us. The, we, we are asking about the gift or handcraft that we can, they can buy when they visit Egypt. What do you recommend for? Um, Abdurrahman or Mazin, yes? Yes, what was the question? I uh, couldn't hear the internet connection is very bad. Uh, yes, uh, we have a question the, about the special gift or handcraft you could suggest to use or to buy when we visit Egypt. Uh, you can buy uh, in Egypt, you know, when you come here in Egypt, you will find a lot of things maybe you, could, you will not see in any other countries. Maybe, uh, when you visit the uh, pyramids, you visit Charmas, uh, there will be a lot of stuff that you will like it. I wouldn't suggest you one thing, but actually when you come here, you would like everything. So you would buy a lot of things, not only one thing. Okay. We, we have mentioned, Salma have mentioned that we have a place called uh, Khan Khalili. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and this is a wonderful place for something because it's uh, full of a lot of um, things that you can buy like... Um, 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 uh, like a gift for you and uh, that reminds you with the uh, uh, with Egypt uh, uh, even if when you just visit the the, the the pyramids area there you will find also a lot of um, uh, monument that you can buy also for uh, like a gift for uh, from Egypt here yeah you also can buy some statues of Abul Hul or the, the pyramids in Egypt 
exactly any touristic place here in egypt you find that there uh, like something to remind you with this in different shapes and in different kinds it may could be like um, um, a statue like him um, uh, like uh, abdullah said or it could be like medal or um, uh, a portrait um, it's like um, or could be like um, um, uh, a cloth or um, a hat it had the shape that uh, reflect the place that you have bought it from that's real nice as mom uh, Gohar said, she's like, that we must bring great amount of money when we visit Egypt. Probably we'll buy <laughs> everything we see inside because they all are, they are going to be so beautiful. Uh, Ms. Swala, one question is for you. Someone has asked, what are the key challenges or considerations that you faced while combining business promotion in language classes? as you have like diverse experience in audience. So she wants to know that if you have, fa if you have faced uh, any like challenges during such promotional classes. Uh, well, it's a, a great challenge for a reason because here in Egypt in our curriculum, we are not studying the such topics like the business in mm -hmm. our early classrooms, especially in, mm -hmm. in schools. We, st we started studying those majors when they joined the college. Oh. Yes, and um, uh, uh, during the uh, the school, they are just yes having like subjects. Maybe the problem happened in the the curriculum, but th there is no application for the what they are studying. They are studying maybe theories. They are studying the um, uh, topics, but we, we don't have like application for the thing. And here have the the, the gap appear between the uh, studying in the schools and then when they move to the the college, they start to f to find the more application them, um, uh, to start to specialize in one of the majors so that was the problem i couldn't just go further in teaching the business for the student uh, because the um, i found that the um, uh, the terms are a little bit hard for them to understand we need to start from the basics uh, but the, uh, i believe that their mentality they can accept it if we try this uh, i believe that they accept it because the um, uh, they are open-minded and they can understand these things yes easily just we need a try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I totally get it. Uh, we have so many questions and they're so interesting. Yes, Zara, go ahead. You want to ask a question? Oh, okay, finally. <laughs> yeah, finally. <laughs> um, um, okay, um, I actually wanted to know about, you know, uh, the participation of Egypt in regarding to sports, like um, since, you know, I had a lot of friends from Alexandria and uh, from Cairo, so they used to love uh, Muhammad Saleh, if I'm not wrong. He is an Egyptian football player. I uh, um, I don't actually... Uh, Muhammad Salah, you mean? I think she's facing bad connection. Is is Egypt? She's back. Um, is Egypt like active in sports? And if it is active in sports, like which sports uh, does it give priority to? Like for example, is it football? Is it uh, something else? Is it something Olympics? I w I would like to know about that. Yes, boys, the stage is yours. The most famous yes or the priority of the, the sport in Egypt. Okay, there is a, uh, 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 you know, we have uh, champions in uh, Olympics like uh, swimming and uh, squash, the handball. Uh, I, I remember last year, uh, the, uh, the last World Cup, we were like the fourth or fifth country. Uh, in uh, football, we aren't that famous. Uh, we just have uh, Mohammed Salah, he's very famous, but uh, the national team isn't that strong. Uh, although we had seven uh, African champions, that's like... Uh, yeah, the Euro and Copa America, if you know about them, it's like something like that. We were seven-time champions. Uh, uh, but the football team now, uh, currently, it's not that strong. But we're famous on swimming. We had a lot of medals, Olympic medals. Uh, someone, a uh, swimmer called Farida. And in squash, uh, we have uh, a very good reception players that uh, are uh, ranked in Olympics. Oh, thank you, Abdurrahman. All 
our girls. Do we have any more questions from them? Or is it enough Egypt today? <laughs> I think it's already seven. I, I can, there's a question, seven minutes yeah, left, yeah, yeah. seven seconds. There's a question I can re, uh, find it, uh, Rabia, Tashfin, I think. She said, yeah. uh, has any one of you ever did uh, a business or plan to do in future? Uh, as If yes, then what would you like to do? The question mm -hmm. for you guys. Mazin, Abdullah, Abdurrahman, Perihan, Salma. I repeat the question again for you. Has any one of you ever did a business or plan to do in the future? And if yes, then what would you like to do as a business? Who uh, start? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we were thinking before to, yes, we are, we are before, uh, like uh, two months ago, we, are, we were thinking to start a local brand in Egypt uh, that makes uh, uh, some clothes, t-shirts, uh, pants, and uh, others. Uh, in Egypt, uh, we support local brands, maybe more than international, especially um, this period of time. And it's very famous. Uh, we thought, but we didn't start yet. But uh, I hope one day we will start it. So is it a dream or you have started to plan for it? Uh, uh, we started planning for it, but we didn't actually do anything. But we, we're planning. We're still planning. OK, great. And Mezen, what about you? Uh, the same. You are part of yes, one of the part of this the, this business plan. Yes. Okay, so you are, and of course, Abdullah the same, right? Yes, we three. <laughs> so you're you're waiting for an action plan now. Yeah, we're waiting for an action plan. We didn't plan that, you know, but we didn't start anything yet. Okay. Oh, Perihan, what about you? Do you have a plan for a, biz a future business? Peri? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm thinking about opening my own local business. I'm obsessed with like all the, the accessories with stainless steel and uh, uh, the silver, the silver ones. So I'm hoping to open my uh, local brand for uh, for making these handmade uh, silver accessories, especially silver. Yeah, great. Yes. Thank you, guys. All right, I think uh, this is it then. Wow, the time passed really fast. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> what, that's what I was shaking. I was like, whoa, it's seven eight already. <laughs> All right, Wala, thank you so much for joining us today. We learned so much about Egypt, and your students were impeccable. Uh, each one of you have a different visual of uh, Egypt and you guys have such amazing goals and best of luck for that and inshallah we'll meet in the next session and you guys will get to know about Pakistan and us sure uh, yes yes inshallah thank you thank you thank you very much <laughs> can you just uh, teach us how thank to you. say yes uh, like we say uh, in Egypt, we say salam alaikum or salam, bye bye. That's how we just salute each other when we leave. What do you yeah. say then? We, we say khuda hafiz. No, again. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> khuda hafiz. Khuda hafiz. Right? Khuda hafiz, yeah. Khuda hafiz. Khuda hafiz. Khuda hafiz. Like this? We do like this. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much, Walla. Thank you. Thank Have a you. good day. Have a good day to you too. Allah Hafiz. Hafiz. Bye.